The 2017 Chinese blockbuster War Wolf has touched many Chinese. The movie ends with a scene that highlights a line on a Chinese passport. It reads, "Chinese citizens, when you are in danger overseas, don't give up. Remember, behind you there is a powerful motherland." However, the war in Ukraine has made many Chinese people realize that the reality is a very different story. I was deeply moved by the phrase after watching War Wolf. And then I opened my passport and found there was nothing behind it. What? By logic, Beijing should have been the first country to know about Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Surprisingly, the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, was unusually slow in its evacuation efforts. Before the war broke out, the U.S., U.K., and other countries closed their embassies in Ukraine and urged their citizens to leave as soon as possible. Not only did the U.S. and European countries evacuate their expatriates, but Thailand and India, among others, also sent chartered flights to Ukraine before the airspace was blocked. However, China didn't issue any warnings to its citizens in Ukraine at that time. On February 24th, Russian President Vladimir Putin launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Beijing's attitude was ambiguous on the matter, unwilling to call it an invasion. In the first few days of the war, the official Chinese media and the social media that are strictly controlled by the CCP almost overwhelmingly supported the Russians. Inside China, Chinese people virtually saw a completely different war from what most of the world saw. In some instances, ridicule posts such as "Take in Ukrainian beauties" were even posted. Such posts had sown the seeds of chaos and put Chinese citizens in Ukraine in danger. Everyone, come and see. See? It's empty. There is nothing left. Foreigners won't sell anything to the Chinese anymore. Just now, we were shot at. Two Ukrainians were chasing us with guns. The three of us ran as fast as we could. Bullets were flying over our heads. The girls were scared and cried. I took the subway to a large supermarket to buy some supplies. I was threatened and intimidated by the local Ukrainians. I was stalked by a Ukrainian. I lost him in a small supermarket. I have to run home in a hurry. I will plan to buy supplies later. The bombing has just ended. The lights are on. Unlike what you guys said, we were afraid to turn on the lights, hiding in the basement like rats. I really don't understand what benefits Chechnya and Putin have given you. Putin sent troops, and you are so happy. I, a Chinese, am in Odessa, Ukraine. The embassy in Kiev. The Chinese are also in Kiev. The Russian army is fighting in self-defense. Can you tell me which country's self-defense war is fought in another country's capital? And they say if the Americans have paid me, I might lose my life tomorrow. I still care about money. I donated money today to the defending army. They are defending my life. I don't care what country a person is. First, I am a human being. People should respect life. People have the right to live. We're not afraid. We're angry. We were living our lives and went to work every day. The missiles were sent. They were right next to my office. On March 1st, a Chinese show host called for a truce in a post on Chinese social media Weibo. The post was immediately criticized by a large number of CCP pinkies, a young party-loving group. The post then disappeared. Later, another Chinese TV host who had 2.9 million followers was officially banned after she shared videos and photos of a Russian mass rally against the war. Separately, a co-signed letter from five Chinese professors from several prestigious universities appeared briefly on Chinese social media, but has since been deleted. The letter criticized Russia for attacking its weak neighbor. Following outrage in Ukraine caused by some Chinese joking about the war, the official Chinese media started to appeal to the public not to do so. China's online police adjusted what content to censor in response.
They shut down accounts containing content such as taking in Ukrainian beauties, but pro-war videos and articles continue to circulate on the internet. Chinese online commentary, driven by nationalism, has called on China to support Russia by buying oil, gas, and other commodities. I would like to donate 6,000 yuan or 950 US dollars to my brothers in Russia. I hope President Putin can launch a nuclear warhead, targeting three countries, Britain, the US, and France. Aim at places that are most populated. I don't want Russia to fall, and then NATO will take on China. They will let Tsai Ing-wen take over China. Chinese nationals in Russia have suffered great losses as a result of the war. This morning when I woke up, rubles has dropped to about 5 points, about 50 cents, which means that we can't sell these goods now. We have to close down for a few days now. Ruble is losing its value. It hit the Chinese business people in Russia very hard. The loss is too much. Overnight, their assets almost shrunk by half. Inside China's firewall, some people are believed to have acquired more information through various channels. Even within the censored environment, some Chinese have become experienced in dissecting the CCP propaganda and reading between the lines. Chinese are debating in private, blocking each other on social media because of different opinions. Here are two elderly men fighting over the war in Ukraine. One has his ear injured as a result. After the war broke out, the Chinese embassy in Ukraine initially called on the Chinese to display Chinese flags for safety. One day later, it told the Chinese not to reveal their identity. How serious are the consequences of joking around? Nowadays, the internet is so developed. I said yesterday, our overseas edition of the newspaper can be seen by the whole world. You posted these articles on taking in Ukrainian beauties. The result is that Ukrainian women are sharing the post, now they are shared widely. The hostility towards Chinese here is very high. It is very serious. They are expelling us Chinese with guns. They won't let you enter the bunkers and bomb shelters. The embassy issued a statement, don't say you're Chinese, think about it, yesterday and today are completely different versions. How many Chinese people have you hurt? And it hurts the feelings of Ukrainians too. All things with Chinese symbols will be removed today. On February 25th, the Chinese embassy issued a notice that it was ready to start the evacuation by chartered plane. However, on February 27th, the evacuation plan was cancelled on the grounds that officials were experiencing practical difficulties due to the escalating war situation between Russia and Ukraine. It has dashed the hopes of Chinese citizens waiting in Ukraine. As Russian troops used heavy artillery to bombard several cities in Ukraine, the Chinese government didn't announce the evacuation until March 1st. But Chinese students disclosed online that the Chinese embassy failed to provide any assistance. I'm really scared now. I want to get help from my country. I call you guys over and over again. I'm going to collapse. I really need help from you guys. I have told you, this is a very difficult time. You go to the view. The embassy can help you evacuate there. I can't get a car. The train station is too crowded to go in. How do you expect me to go? I go there. I don't know anyone. How can I go? You go to Lviv, to Lviv, it'll be better than you are now. But can you guarantee that I'll reach there safely? There's no assistance at all. You just said we can withdraw freely, withdraw freely. But we ask every day, where are these people who say that the country is with us? Some Chinese have to find their own way out of the war.
挤到火火车上其实不是很挤，但是你想要上火车就会挤。对，特别挤。我本来戴着眼镜，眼镜都挤掉了。The Chinese embassy finally sent a notice on March 2nd, saying that at 12 noon on that day, those who voluntarily evacuated in and around Kiev would gather at one of the metro stations in the city and then travel to Moldova by bus as a group. Those who drove themselves could go with them. However, according to the video circulated as well as information from the overseas Chinese community, it shows that with the war raging and transportation disrupted, people were unable to go to Kiev and had to stay behind. The video was taken by a Chinese man in Ukraine. After he posted the video of the Ukrainian people resisting the Russian army on Chinese social media, his video was deleted and his account was restricted. He was also threatened to have tea with the police when he returned to China. Having tea is an alternative term used by the Chinese for being interrogated by the police. I don't even bother to chastise them. Tired. I don't know what I want. Come, let's enjoy the end of the world. I won't hide anymore. Think about it. I'm about to lose my life. Am I still worried about being asked to have tea with police when I return to China? We will enjoy the end of the world, listening to the air raid warning. Missiles didn't do anything to me, but my own country started firing at me. When missiles are launched, it's the residents living here who die. You see the so-called evacuation? The embassy just informed us. Saying the Chamber of Commerce is helping, it sounds as if the embassy would be sending a vehicle to pick us up. But in fact, the embassy wants me to cross the line of fire to get to them. Are you kidding me? It would take a tank to get through. A gray-haired Ukrainian woman saw me. She didn't say anything. She just cried and hugged me. A very long hug for a minute. I think it's worth it, just for this. It was particularly warm. I must not have been afraid because I feel particularly warm today. Ukraine's second largest city has been bombed by Russian troops for days. On the evening of March 3rd, Ukrainian media reported that several students, including four Chinese students, were killed in a bombing by Russian forces. The news was refuted by the CCP's official media as fake news. But in the WeChat group of Chinese students in Ukraine, the news was considered real, with some saying, "I must go back home. Four Chinese have been killed." In Sumy, a northeastern region of Ukraine, more than 100 Chinese students are trapped in local bomb shelters and face a food shortage. They posted that nearby train stations and bridges had long been destroyed by the Russian bombing, and that waiting for the embassy's rescue has become the only solution. They feel more and more desperate and don't know when they will be able to leave the war-ridden country. They posted on Weibo, hoping to get a response from Chinese authorities, but their pleas were deleted and their accounts shut down. At present, more than 3,000 Chinese citizens in Ukraine have been safely transferred to neighboring countries of Ukraine. China thanks the relevant countries for facilitating the entry and short stay of Chinese citizens. The official Chinese media continues to portray to the Chinese people how warm the motherland is. The most recent news, which was heavily covered by the official media, was that the first evacuation flight arrived in Hangzhou, Zhejiang Province, from the Romanian capital on the morning of March 5th, and another arrived in Zhengzhou, Henan Province, a few hours later. The two flights carried a total of about 480 people. On TV, the evacuated group is welcomed back to China. However, those who are lucky enough to return have paid a high price. A petition to the higher ups of the Chinese embassy abroad, signed by all Chinese who evacuated from Ukraine to Romania, states that they were informed on the afternoon of the third that they were required to pay for their own flight tickets and quarantine hotels, with one ticket costing 17,999 RMB. Or about 2,846 U.S. dollars, while the cost of quarantine was not yet clear. The petition says that the airfare offered by the Chinese airlines is unacceptable, and that they have been struggling all the way trying to leave Ukraine. 
Many simply didn't have time to prepare sufficient funds and some couldn't afford the airfare. On March 4th, a Chinese student who was evacuated from Kyiv to Romania told overseas Chinese media that everyone was charged the same. The approximate cost of a ticket was 2,846 US dollars. He said, We dare not complain about the price. If we do, I may be blocked by the system and get bullied. The price is a little too expensive for students, but anyone who dares to complain will be attacked and they will say, it's so cheap and hurry. As we mentioned earlier, most countries in the world have helped their citizens evacuate early. China's neighboring country, India, sent four of its largest transport planes to evacuate its nationals 24-7 for free after the war broke out. As of March 2nd, more than 12,000 Indians have left Ukraine. Chinese officials estimate that there will be at least 6,000 Chinese citizens in Ukraine after the second and latest group of evacuees on March 5th.